So welcome to the self learning platform by Dr. Shushma Singh. Today we start unit 13 JS Mill. And our topic is the importance of individual liberty. On liberty in 1859 begins with the paradox. Civil liberties are under greater threat in democratic than in despotic regimes wrote Mill. In the absolute states of earlier times, the ruler's interest was seen as opposed to that of the subjects, who were specially vigilant against any encroachment on their existing freedom. In modern democracies, based on the principle of self-government, the people feel less under threat from their own government. Mill betrays this laxity and said that individuals needed to be more vigilant about the danger to their liberty not only from the government but also from social morality and custom. Why is it important to protect individual liberty? When individuals make their own choices, they use many of their faculties. The human faculties of perception, judgment, discriminative feeling, mental activity, and even more preference are exercised only in making a choice. The mental and moral, like the muscular powers, are improved only by being used. He who chooses his pain for himself employs all his faculties. He must use observation to see, reasoning and judgment to foresee activity to gather materials for decision, discrimination to decide, and when he has decided, firmness and self-control to hold to his deliberate decision. Individuals who act in a certain fashion only because they have been told to do so, do not develop any of these faculties. Emphasizing that what is important is not only what men do, but also what manner of men they are that do it. Mill said that we might be able to guide individuals in some good path without allowing them to make any choices, but worth of such human beings would be doubtful. Mill clarified and detailed his position on liberty by defending three specific liberties, the liberty of thought and expression, including the liberty of speaking and publishing, the liberty of action and that of association. We will follow Mill's argument in each of these cases. Liberty of thought and expression, if all mankind minus one were of one opinion and only one person were of the contrary opinion, mankind would be no more justified in silencing that one person than he. If he had the power would be justified in silencing mankind. 
provided four reasons for this freedom of expression. For Mill, since the dominant idea of a society usually emanate from the class interest of that society's ascendant class, the majority opinion may be quite far from the truth or from the social interest. It is more than likely that the suppressed minority opinion is true and those suppressing it will only prevent or at least delay mankind from knowing the truth. Human beings are fallible creatures and their certainty that the opinion they hold is true is justified only when their opinion is constantly opposed to contrary opinions. Mill wanted us to give up the assumption of infallibility. When our certainty about our beliefs makes us crash all contrary points of view, so that our opinion is not subject to criticism. What if the minority opinions were false? Mill gave three reasons for why it should still be allowed freedom of expression. It is only by constantly being able to refute wrong opinions that we hold our correct opinions as living truth. If we accept an opinion, even if correct, on the basis of authority alone, that opinion becomes a dead dogma. Neither do we understand its grounds or and nor does it mold our character or move us to action. Finally, Mill argued that truth is a multifaceted thing and usually contrary opinions both contain a part of the truth. Suppressing one opinion then leads to the suppression of one part of the truth. When it comes to the liberty of action, Mill asserted a very simple principle. The sole end for which mankind are warranted individually or collectively in interfering with the liberty of action of any of their number is self-protection. The only purpose for which power can be rightfully exercised over any number of a civilized community against his will is to prevent harm to others. His own good, either physical or moral, is not a sufficient warrant. Mill acknowledged that if it was difficult to draw a line between self-regarding and other-regarding action, and he provided some hypothetical examples as proof of this difficulty. If a man destroys his own property, this is a case of other regarding action because others dependent on that man will be affected. Even if this person has no dependents, his action can be said to affect others who influenced by his example might behave in a similar manner. 
against this mill said that only when one has specific obligations to another person can one be said to affect his or her interest therefore the case of an individual affecting others by his example will not stand on his own ground mill cited all kind of restrictions on not eating pork or beef or priest being required not to marry as examples of unnecessary restrictions on self regarding action other examples are sabbatarian legislation which prevents individuals from working or even singing and dancing on sundays mill wrote that something sometime even in the case of other regarding action no restrictions can be placed on one for instance if one wins a job through competition this action can be said to affect others in trust by ensuring that they do not get the job but no restrictions are applicable here similarly trade has social consequences but believing in the principle of free trade mill argued that the lack of restrictions on trade actually leads to better pricing and better equality of products and when it comes to self regarding action as we already showed the principle of liberty requires the absence of all restrictions mill defended freedom of association on three grounds first when the things to be done is likely to be done better by individuals than by government speaking generally there is no one fit to conduct any business or to determine how or by whom it shall be conducted as those who are personally interested in it second allowing individuals to get together to do something even if they do not do it as well as the government might have done it is better for the mental education of these individuals the right of association becomes for mill a practical part of the political education of a free people taking them out of the narrow circle of personal and family selfishness and accustoming them to the comprehension of joint concerns habituating them to act from public or semi public motives and guide their conduct by aims which unite instead of isolating them from one another further government operations tend to be everywhere alike with individuals and voluntary associations on the contrary there are varied experiments and endless diversity of experience third if we let the government do everything there is the evil of adding unnecessary to its power mills ideal was improvement he wanted individuals to constantly better themselves morally mentally and materially it was to this ideal that he saw individual liberty as instrumental
the only unfailing and permanent source of improvement is liberty since by it there are as many possible independent centers of improvement as there are individuals individuals improving themselves would naturally lead to a better and improved society here we want to wind up this lecture thank you so much for your attention